This conference will now be recorded. Okay, the time being 7.05, uh, June 30th, 2021, we'll bring uh, the Budget Committee meeting work session to order. Um, we have Scott Ruggles, Catherine Dawson, Bill Lawrence, and Christine Dimbitsky is um, available by phone as she is out of town. Okay, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Justice for all. <laughs> Great, thank you. So, has everyone looked at um, the information I sent out? And what yeah. do we have for uh, any any comments? I didn't see the change from balance sheet to trial balance. Well, it should be on there. I know I told my wife. I just looked at the email that we got, the last email, and it still says, um, where is it here? Um, oh. Under format for providing financials. Okay, let's see. So th that's on the it application. Says, yeah, it's, still, it's on the application sheet. Include income statement and trial balance. Is that what you see, Catherine? I see it in the last paragraph before the sample. Oh, okay. So, the letter. Uh, last paragraph. It's, it's, it's on the letter. It's in the letter. Yeah, it's in the yeah, letter. Yeah, not in the. It's not in the application though. So let's see. Where is that supposed to be? Second page where it says format for providing financials. Okay. Uh, it says including income statement and balance sheet, and then okay. it says please attach balance sheet. Okay, yep. so you want, we want to do instead of balance sheet, we want trial balance. Yep. Okay. And you, and you don't need the word sheet either, just trial balance. Just trial balance, yeah. And yep. that. Um, In that paragraph and right below it says please attach balance sheet. Trial balance. Yep. So those two changes there, yeah. And is it acceptable to have that as an appendix on the uh, comparisons for the lakes regions? Other? Yeah. I think. Okay. Gives them an example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we can make those changes. And. Um, mm -hmm. Then um, I think we should um, mail them almost immediately. Give everybody, you know, a head start. And I think it should be certified mail. You don't need a return receipt, but a certified mail will. A, we will actually. I have know. a question about that. Sure. Um. I was reading the RSA that stated in the letter, and it doesn't say anything about this, but do other towns mail them out, or do they just give them to the people who request them? Because I didn't see anywhere where we even required to mail them or have certified, or, and I think it was briefly brought up in the last meeting, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the RSA that's mentioned in the uh, letter doesn't have anything about it, just how we run a budget committee, really. That's right. So, I don't know. Does anybody know of any of the towns that actually mail them out, or do they just have them available for the people who uh, want funds have done this year, I mean, year after year after year after year after year, except for, you know, maybe they have a different director or whatnot, but. Are we are we required to mail these out, or is this? No. Is is Janice still here? We are not required by oh. law to mail these out. We are not required by law to right. offer funds to anybody. Do so, we know if other towns mail them out, or do they just wait for somebody to ask for 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 money? I can tell you what's what I know of in the past. Okay. 
I haven't inquired recently, and recently it's probably been eight or nine years since I asked anybody in other towns. And they don't, This to me, this is like soliciting. They don't do this. Um, a couple of them, and I can't even remember which towns. I think it was Belmont was one of them. But on their website for their budget committee, they had some little sentence about contacting the budget committee secretary if they were looking for funding. And that's that's what we've done in the past. We've had on our website the actual form that they would have to fill out with the download. Yeah. And, uh, and then you fill out. The risk, of course, is if you have one that people expect, you know, it's going to be in the budget or something that you can rely on or however you want to put it. And they don't meet the deadline, and then you're sort of behind the eight ball. If you want to include them, you know, it becomes, I think, a process issue um, you know, for, for the budget committee. Then, do you or do you not make exceptions based on your date? Um, I think where the budget committee has mailed them out in the past, and they have done that for a number of years. It might be courteous of us if we're going to change that and not mail them out that we should mail them out this year with a note saying in future years this budget committee will not be mailing these out you know there will be you know you'll have to go to the website but i think agree we've done right. it what that five, was five that or was, six years well that was my question i don't i wasn't really yeah. aware of how that process worked yeah i just said that we have this letter that we have to send out and but no one told me that they had to request it or it's it's just a, it is a a process that we send whoever is that's um it would be a courtesy if we yeah so uh, that would be a good idea to uh add that scott so um maybe a happy medium do we send out that indicates that they need to go to the website to do not it's digital we could I mean, do that yeah, we're, it's here's here's just as, as going from the old school paper world we started it now to the digital world um my guess is it's going to be much easier to collect things digitally organize them digitally than have to go through the paper plus digital stuff so i would suggest we send out a letter that you need to go to the website to this link whatever it is they want to decide in order to be able to fill out your online documents to make your request they do Good idea. To send us paper documents also, but within that process. Are you, is that comfortable for you to deal with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do they have to send us paper documents? Yeah, we, well, asked, we, have we, asked, for, we asked for 16 copies. We're going to be copying that all out. We all need to have that in, I mean. We shouldn't be going I, to the expense. I mean, that's I, probably no, minimal. But right. I would rather have them send it with all their, they've got all those. Um, you know, um, accountants, um, documents, and everything. And um, I think we all need it to write on and to have in front of us at the meetings. So, but I agree. I think that's a good idea that we should send all these people just a letter um, and maybe that should be certified that we did take the, we had the effort to do what we have done in the past and that we do also say at the same time that in the future, please come to the website for your request. We do have all of these emails of the people that we I dealt with last year. I did find last year, the previous year, there was probably about September. So <laughs> on the person that took care of the project. So, and I, from what I understood, it was sort of customary that it's how it works. I mean, there are some like the I, you know, fly for me to email the contact. But, so it might take a little bit of time to, to figure out exactly who we need to direct the email to. But, I mean, I had to do that. And it's not that difficult. Somebody usually answers the email. And if they don't, then I found somebody there that said I was dealing with such and such. Who can I contact now? And, you know, so, but, so well, that's an option as well. Yeah, and I can also, uh, I can also configure it in such a way so that they can submit documents and then they can go into a repository so that they can be accessed because everything that's coming in, in the past i've always made sure to scan it and i've got it all organized by year and by submission so it would save time for me uh, coming in electronically i would love that 
Uh, and the other thing too is where you say uh, 16 copies, I have a feeling you may need fewer. Um, it could be a, a one or two of the selectmen may choose to get those electronically. Uh, and one of your budget committee members may as well. So uh, I think uh, selectmen Ruggles in particular, but, um, but in any case, um, but you know, there are a number of things that we can do. Yeah. Well, we include a blurb if we do this that says um, we're doing this as a courtesy to those who applied in 2020. Just so we don't get somebody to say, well, you know, nobody sent me a notice saying it had to be online. Da, da, da. <clears throat> well, that's why I wanted to certify just so that we could track they actually got it where an email may never make it to the right place. I mean, if they've changed people they midstream. Can change, they can change. Generally speaking, like say last year, people, somebody else is picking up those emails. But when I didn't get a reply, I immediately said, hey, if this, and if they didn't get anything again, then I, I need to call. Like I say, you call any of the organizations, they're going to know who replaced Janice. Right. I know I brought in a list of addresses and I mean, Deborah said, well, that's, you know, hers was wrong or that what she was uh, representing. Well, what, what do we want to do then? I think if we send it out email, I don't mind doing that, that we make sure that we keep a copy of the email that acknowledges they've gotten it. And if they haven't, we make a phone call to that agency and get a correct email um, until we've made contact with that group. Are we going to do you all can actually that requested funds? Did, were there some that we didn't fund? Yeah, there are a number yeah. of them. So are we going to send it to those or just the ones we funded? Well, we didn't fund them mainly because of COVID. But I know. I would, I think we should send it to them too, because they've okay. been yearly mm -hmm. from the few years I've been here, they've been every year, they have requested money. So um, those that requested last year. So the list that we have from last year, from last year we should, we should. That requested, yeah, right? That requested, requested. Funds, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if the Red Cross is really late. I don't know if we want to include them in there. They can. They can I always. Think, I think they get enough federal funding. They can always um, request if they wish. Well, that's the board. I would not include them. Not yeah. include right. right. Christine, what do you think? Yeah. What? <laughs> We're not going to include the Red Cross in. Um, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The solicitation. I did want to mention that if you send out emails, you can actually send the email where if somebody clicks on it to read it, you get a read receipt. And I'm sure Tim knows how to do that to instruct whoever's going to send any emails. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Tim could um, just with, with, if we decide to send things out digitally, uh, is there a way for them to come over to Google Docs or um, where, you know, as Catherine was talking about, she likes to make her notes on things where we could make it so that we can sort of comment or make our notes on each of them? Is that possible? Would be able, and I know that they write on PDF as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to complicate things. I'm just asking the question. Capabilities there. Okay. I'm not sure it's practical this yeah. time around. Okay, so we might as well uh, wrap this up. Um, is there a motion? To we're done for this. Are you going to revamp the letter, uh, Bill? Is your wife going to do that, or you can probably revamp the letter, right? Change trial balance and. Um, 
Okay, good. Yeah, I have this marked up if, if for her if you want. And we also need to, unfortunately, we have to take Janice Delacroix off as the contact on the uh, the the app the uh, um, letter. Yeah. And that will, will be what we will email, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, and we also want to include that um, on the letter that in the future you will need to, to go to the website to um, solicit funds so that we need to put that in there and that is a courtesy to those who applied last year okay this, le this, is, this is a courtesy and in the future um, please go to the town website to solicit funds we'll give them a, we'll give them a link and i'll make sure it's set up so that uh, the form that you have that you want them to complete is uh, is there by the time those emails are sent. Yeah, but I think in the future to try and reduce some of the local tracking of the emails you send out some of the initial communication or even now is we need we will need emails updated on a yearly basis. Yeah. So and, and as you may as you know you may not get all of it, but it's gonna increase from probably fifty to sixty percent so seventy two years later probably for example, which will be helpful for you, I'm sure. <laughs> And as Christina mentioned earlier, that in that second sentence on the application where it says, I mean, the uh, letter, as mandated by RSA 32 colon 5, that needs to come out. Yeah, it has nothing to do with, it just says how to run a budget committee and how you town budget. It doesn't say anything about outside agency funds. The only reason we can fund outside agencies is the second part of the New Hampshire State Constitution. It allows us to buy services. Nowhere in 32 does it say anything about outside funds, funding. Because, you know, that sounds like mandated. It sounds like we're required to. But you know what I mean? Well, the 32 mandates. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. <clears throat> Someone have an electronic copy of it? I think I sent this off before um, for us to work on. So. But I can just scratch that out if you think that we don't need to be mandated. Yeah, do you have one with the corrections that you've already made? Yeah. And then what the corrections are tonight is the afternoon that they have to correct the material conditions. Then um, or he can scratch it out or whatever. Yeah, we could just need. yeah, we could just delete that. And um <clears throat> so uh, the motion is that we email all of last year's um, outside agency solicitors as a courtesy to go to the a notated website for their solicitations and in the future they will it will be on them to to do that Is there a second? Second. Are you going to make it so this form is fill inable? Uh, or does it we'll need see. to be? We'll see. I think this time around. Uh, Just let them print it out. On, they, they can print it, fill it out, and I'll give them a place where they can submit a PDF. But yeah, eventually. Any other uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have four in favor. Any opposed? All right. So the next is just the next motion would be that we um, alter the application and the um, <coughs> the letter to what we've already um, spoken about, which is deleting. RSA 32 and the Dear Applicant Part, uh, 
taking uh, uh, Janice's name off and putting in Lisa and also saying this is a courtesy um, so in the future we'll have to solicit the town website and then also we have trial balances instead of balance sheet and I think that's all I have any other changes I think we've got that changed Yeah, proposed 2022. So I will move that, those changes. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Any discussion? I guess we already did. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's, <laughs> we have uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing that that's passed. So next we need to uh, talk about meeting schedule. I'm thinking if we have all of the information from these agencies, and if we can get that ahead of time, we really don't have to meet till like September 8th. Sounds good. And it'd be nice to get that information when it comes in. You could contact us. We can either come down and grab it, or you could, if it's electronic, you could send it to us. How does that sound? Sounds good. Sounds good. Does the letter uh, provide a deadline from the commission to do? They want it by <laughs> September 1st on here. Yep. So. so does it make sense rather than waiting for all of them to come in to go over their, their applications, that we go over their applications and we find something missing, we contact them? Sure. Before we even schedule them to come in? Oh, sure. So yeah, basically, yeah. if we spend September doing that, then schedule That would save some time. Yeah, yeah. Save a lot of time. Sure. And then have yeah. them October. So you're saying when we get their information, Go we it. review it individually or? No, we have to do it as a group. Oh, so we have a meeting? Uh, September 8th, after September. You know, oh, September, after, oh, September 8th on. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's what I figured. Hopefully, if we have the information ahead of time, we'll be, we'll be ready for that. Yeah. Or uh, we can September do September 8th meeting and we can just, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, get everything, at, uh, get our ducks in a row, so to speak. Some of them we may not even need for them to come in. Yeah. You think yeah, about yeah. it? Sure. This would be good. Okay, so. Yeah, got... I mean, we used to have them come in because we got new people on the board, but it's always really the same stuff every year. Right, and it's yeah, really yeah. the financial information that determines do they need us to give them money or not. Yep. Okay. Well, any any other business? I just would like to um, just bring to the board's attention. Hopefully, without glasses, I can't read it myself. But the first paragraph on the emergency forum situation. Just because, you know, I know that we do work on a tight schedule, mm -hmm. especially um, during the, you know, not so much afterwards, but right, these first eight weeks are really important that we have a quorum while they go. Okay, so you're just making a point that the board really needs to have a quorum yeah, and, physically and, here because. Right, because it says unless, and if you just read that first paragraph in full, not just the part I but highlighted. But I don't think that applies to us anymore. I thought we were back to 91 for our meeting. We are. We are. See, but see, is that like what that is, or is that an emergency? This is this, this yeah. Is, this is for the this is the new stuff now, right here. It says what an emergency is. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take that from yourself. <laughs> but it's basically, if you just read that first paragraph, it does explain what 91A, what emergency is in 91A. Oh, yeah. Um, 
No, you, you want know, me to read interesting it? you brought that up. Should we send a notice to all the budget committee members um, that has to do with if you're going to miss a meeting, the requirement to notify and why that's in 32? Um, if that's what you would wish is. And that, um, you know, because of COVID, we are back to, as you said, 91A, and we can't just decide I'm going to stay at home. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it does have some provisions for emergency situations, yeah. but it has to be determined in emergency situation, something that can't be decided at a later date. So, you know, it's the only way we need to take action on that today versus next, you know, and make another a makeup meeting next week or two Saturday. Right, but I think we should let the members know that if they just decide they're not going to go and they don't contact, I think they're supposed to contact the chair. I haven't read 32 for a couple of months. <laughs> this, well, I and I and usually send an email asking you to, to respond, and I didn't do that. So. Right. Is you can you can be expelled. I just think it's good before we get into it that everybody is reminded of the law. Okay. You like that? What do we you think? think? Sure. <laughs> now this, did you want me to read this? There's no date on this. No. Okay. No, I, mean, well, yeah. I just wanted to point it out because I, I did print that off just because I wasn't 100% clear on the other board exactly what the situation was. So. No, I know. In fact, in the past, on the many years I've had, we've had to actually call somebody on the phone in order to pass something um, because of lack of quorum. But and really, the, the online access now becomes more of a courtesy to people that, you know, the public that might want to listen in or, or have public comment. Or yeah. And I don't mind that expanded transparency. I mean, I think that's, right. that's so nice that people yeah. can don't have to come in to be involved. Yeah. The Attorney General's office has a translation basically of 91A because they're the ones that enforce it. And sometimes it's, well, for most people, it's much clearer because they kind of explain it better. It's quite a thick, <laughs> but it's very interesting reading and they have examples in the back. Huh? It's online at the Attorney General's. Yeah, it's, it's really very good. Well, I think it's very good. Lisa, do you have any questions? What? Okay, great, great. Any questions? Just, of course, I won't remember a lot of the stuff, but that's why you're here. <laughs> yes, but as requests come in, we'd like to get those as soon as possible. Any other business? I'm motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Why aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you, Christine, for being here. I know. Luckily, I got on enough. I have technological problems sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Christine. Yeah. <laughs>